There are lots of reasons why people choose to downsize. Sometimes it's financial and sometimes it's just an opportunity to do something very fun and creative. That is exactly the case with this next inspiring family that we're about to visit who have done something truly remarkable with their home's backyard. Hi Marnie! Hi Bryce, how are you? I'm great thanks, lovely to meet you. G'day Dan, how's it going mate? Yeah good. This home looks absolutely beautiful. Can you tell me first of all how you actually came to be living in this space? So we bought the block about five years ago and there's a house at the front that we've lived in for three and a half years. So it all started with a pool. We wanted a pool and then it turned into a pool and a cabana and then maybe a pool and some space for our parents to come and stay in and then it turned into our own home that we as a family of four now live in. What was it that inspired you to go smaller with your home? I guess I was really interested and I like the idea of minimalism. I guess I've been one of those people who were always wanting more and one day it clicked and I thought this isn't making me happy. So I started going through all my stuff, minimizing everything and decided that we didn't need a lot of stuff to be happy and hence we didn't need a big house to be happy. So that's why we're here now. And so when she came to you and suggested that she wanted to actually do a tiny house project, what did you originally think of that? Did, it, did you take a little bit of convincing to come on board? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I saw the advantages in it eventually, yeah. yeah. What was it that ultimately convinced you in the end? Something different, something a little bit exciting, and we did have a lot of junk, and getting rid of a lot of junk was good. Now, what size is the home here? 31.5 square metres. And how big is the house that you've come from in comparison? Probably about three, four times the size, I would think, yeah. And it looks like your swimming pool is about the same size as your house. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, it's actually bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the uh, swimming pool is about two square metres bigger than the house. So it uh, does surprise a lot of people. <laughs> I bet. But especially in the hot Australian weather, what a phenomenal way of doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I think we spend a lot of time in there as well. So sometimes Dan and Ella can spend five hours in there at a time diving, playing games, and then they're inside collapsing on the lounge at the end of the day. It's fantastic the way that you've really connected the house with this outdoor area. Can you talk to me about how everything's laid out here? Yeah. So when we were doing the design, the brief was that we wanted to spend as much time outside as possible. So with the kitchen, we've got this big gas strut window. So we're often sitting here having a meal or just a chat at the table. We have a lot of meals at the outdoor table. Then outside here, we're always relaxing on the big bean bags or having parties around down the fire pit area. And with the garden, I didn't want anything that was too formal or structured. So we've gone with basically an edible garden. So almost everything in here is something that you can eat. So a lot of our food comes from our house. So you can just go outdoors and pick something for dinner. And did you build this? Was this a DIY project? Yeah, so we did it as an owner builder. We engaged a, a friend who was a builder and he did all the, the site side and we did the um, project management, I guess, uh, procurement, that sort of stuff. He looked after all the, all the hard parts. <laughs> but then you definitely got your hands dirty as well by the sounds of it? Yes. <laughs> yes. There were many, many late nights and weekends and spent in here, so yes. yes. Can you tell me about the materials that you've used on the exterior? Yes, yeah, so we used a um, cement sheet, the Sky on Strayer. It was very, very labor intensive, but it's, I think it's come up pretty good. We've also used raw timber recycled posts, which have you know, quite a bit of, I guess you could say, character in them. So there's a lot of raw timber around the place. The decking's are recycled timber as well. They've all been pulled um, from an old bridge as well, so it's nice to have a little bit of history mixed in with the new. So what are you doing with the main house at the moment? So we rent it out. So the income that we get from that helps us pay down the mortgage a little bit quicker, which is helpful. And it was an advantage when we were building that we were able to add in some privacy details. So we've just added some screening, we tinted some windows and added a fence. So really we've got our complete separate spaces. 
that is such a good way of doing it because of course Sydney right now this is one of the world's most expensive real estate market yeah. so being able to create this kind of living situation gives you an affordable and really effective model of being able to own your own home without the burden of a tremendous mortgage right definitely and getting that extra income helps us pay it down a lot quicker as well like you said Sydney is ridiculous at the moment it's hard for younger people to get into the market so this could potentially be an alternative for people well i absolutely love the outside of the house the style is really cool i'm already ridiculously jealous of your swimming pool <laughs> but can we go inside and take a look yeah come, sure, in. come in thank you this is lovely and immediately walking in here I love the way that this giant window just completely celebrates the fact that the pool was right there. Yeah, definitely. The window was a must, wasn't it? And I feel like that's our piece of art. Now we don't have any room for any other art. So looking out there, it just makes us happy. I absolutely love the way that in here, the light hitting the pool reflects on your ceiling. Yeah, it's really beautiful. So we've put a lot of effort into the ceiling. We used to call this when we were building the tiny house for giants. So we've done the V-groove ceiling and we've made sure it's connected perfectly to the outdoor. So we get that really nice flow from in to out. And it looks like you've done some very interesting things with the furniture. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so I guess this was Dan's idea. We've done the built-in seating, which is also storage as well. So the couches are light and we can move them around as our needs change so the girls can have a play on the mat or we can push them together if we want to watch a movie. So it works really well. Excellent. So are these kind of like bean bags or something? Yeah, then? they are. They're bean bags. What a great idea. And I love how much versatility that brings into the space too. Yeah, definitely. It's good to see that you've really prioritized entertaining and relaxing in this space. And I can see you've got a really wonderful place for watching your movies and everything. <laughs> That's Dan's domain, the TV, isn't it? Well, not really. We don't watch that much of it, but it is important that we had a TV. And it's up right at the right level so you can watch it from the spa as well. No way. Yeah. And you can also, you can have this set of Bluetooth headphones or use the pool speakers and watch a movie or, you know, the tennis or whatever out there. During construction, you would have seen me out there sitting in the half built pool and trying to get the right angle and height on the wall here, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> what a great idea. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and now tell me about the kitchen here. Yeah. So with the kitchen, because we've got a family and I'm cooking all the time, I wanted to make sure that it had all the functionality of a normal kitchen. So we've got the two burner stove, the microwave combi oven. We've also got a dishwasher drawer here as well. And that's the perfect size. So it fills our whole day and I turn it on every night. So it works really well. It's a smaller size fridge. Uh, that probably did take a little bit of getting used to, but it works fine now. Fantastic. And it looks to me like you've hidden everything away very well, but you've got a lot of storage in this kitchen. Oh yeah, heaps of storage. Probably even more than what we need. We've got our long pantry here, and it was probably four times the size in our previous home. but. Honestly, now I don't have things in there that with the expiry dates from about four years ago. So, works well. We've tried to keep it functional. You can see underneath the um, top cupboards there, we've got power points and light switches and things like that. So, they're not on the wall, in your face, they're hidden, but still there. So, space is functional, I guess. What a great way of doing it. And what's in the next room? So, we've got the bathroom. Come and have a look. Cool. Oh, this looks great. I love the tiling work in this room. Yeah, thank you. We tried to do something a little bit different in here. Not too out there, so it still goes with everything. But yeah, we really like it. And can you tell me a little bit about the layout in the bathroom? Uh, originally in the design, we had a, an exterior door on the outside of the bathroom that was going to be used for the pool as well. In the end, we ditched the door and put a louvered window there. The architect sort of did the layout uh, as a standard layout. We originally had a concrete bath in the design, but it turns out with the plumbing, it was gonna become quite expensive as well as the grinds and everything. So we ditched that idea as well. And the kids are in buckets now. <laughs>
And then is this your bedroom in here? Yeah, it is. Come and have a look. Oh, this is lovely. I really like what you've done with these side table things here. Because, yeah, obviously you wouldn't be able to have a proper side table. So that's a great alternative, isn't it? Yeah, my dad made those for us. So made to fit. And then it looks like you've built storage in here as well. Yeah, so we've got heaps of storage in here. It's probably more than we actually need. So that's our linen press. We've also got our clothes basket underneath and then behind us is our wardrobe and we've got even to the ceiling cupboards as well. I've tried to really make sure that everything has its place and being a small space, you don't want things lying around otherwise it gets messy very quickly. So we also have this really cool storage underneath. Initially, when we first moved in, it was actually used as storage, but as the girls' needs have changed, our elder daughter needed somewhere that she could play. So we've made this into a really cool play space for oh, the girls. No way. Yeah, I'll show you. That is such a cool idea. <laughs> yeah. Ella must absolutely love this. She does, she does. It's like a little play cave. I really love what you've done. And I love the way that even though this home is so small, it really is a family home and you've really given the kids so much consideration in what's going on in this space, haven't you? Exactly. I mean, not everything has been purpose built for the kids, but we've really tried to make the spaces work for them. So it's a fun house as well. And then what do we have next door? So it's the girls room next door. All right, can we check that out? Yeah. So this changed, I guess, from the initial plans and Dan one night came up with this fantastic idea so the girls can get into their room in their own special way. So initially we had a ladder up, so Dan created these stairs that they climb up into their own secret little door into their beds. That is ridiculously cool and you've even built a little fairy door into it, that's so cute. Yeah, it is really cute. So Ella's gone through a lot of adjustments, moving into the house, having a new sister. So we actually have fairies who come and visit us and change up the spaces for her as things need to change. So Frankie moving into her room, etc. So it's a really fun way for her to get excited about the new spaces. Great. So the fairies created the play space under the bed. Yes. Yes. And it looks like you've built a lot of storage in this space too. Yeah, we've built some functional cupboards to keep things like the kids' school bags. You gotta have a place for everything. And so I think in that cupboard, I think that's the vacuum cleaner <laughs> and the broom. <laughs> but you're not sure, you've never, never seen inside. I've never opened it. <laughs> and then the kids' bedroom through there. Yeah, yeah let's go. Have let's a look. check it out. <laughs> this is so clever. You've actually got three levels in here. Yeah, we do. So it's a vertical bedroom. So two beds and a play space, which is now actually Frankie's nursery. But you've got the second bed up the top as well. Yeah, that's right. What was it that inspired you to do the space like this? I think when you're tight on space and you've got constraints that you actually become more creative. And so what does a normal bedroom have? It's got normally a bed and a little play space and a wardrobe. And we were able to do that in, you know, something that perhaps may have been unusable. Yeah, in a fraction of the size of the normal space, yeah. you've created something really special in here. That is very cool. Yeah. And so when Frankie moves up to one of the beds, the intention is to turn the downstairs here into a play space. Yeah, that's right. We can move some things around and put their toys in here. So this will be a play space for the girls as well. We put a few fun things in there as well. There's some talking tubes. And so the kids can be down in a play space and talk to the other kids up in the beds. I get the feeling that you are having just as much fun in here as the girls are. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Ella, wake up. I'm awake. So how long have you been living in the home now? It's been about 16 months now. And how are you adapting to life in the new space? We love it. We wouldn't change a thing about it. So no regrets. Everything's working really well. So I think living in a small space has changed the way that we live completely. And really everything's worked better than what we'd imagined. I spend less time cleaning, you spend less time maintaining a house. 
and we just get to spend time together as a family. We're outdoors so much more. It works really well. We're happy. Is there anything in here that you're finding isn't working for you? I don't think there's anything that's not working at the moment. It's all working really well. Yeah. Probably moving into the future when the girls get a bit older, the bedroom might become a bit of a problem. Uh, you know, getting into the small door there and the bunk beds and the small play space, but we'll deal with that as it comes. Like we sort of said, we're constantly evolving and changing things. So yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that as it, as we'll it comes. It work. We'll make it work. And can you talk to me about the cost that was involved in creating this home? Sort of hard because there was so much involved. We did go over budget a lot on excavation. We had a lot of problems early on. Everything in here is custom made. Everything's difficult, very labor intensive. We actually did work up at the house yeah. as well. So we're still trying to break it all down, but including the landscaping and the pool and everything. It must be around the 400 mark. 400 yeah. mark, yeah. yeah. But at the end of the day, we could never build a house to this standard or quality on a large scale. So that was kind of the advantage that we saw was being able to have something really beautiful and functional that worked and that was affordable, I guess. I think you hit the nail right on the head when you said that part of the trick with these spaces is everything has to be customized. Nothing in here is mass produced. Everything in here is high quality. And I think that what you've done here is absolutely money well spent. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. we agree. The build has given us options in the future. Yes, we have a bigger mortgage, uh, but we look at it as we've spent an extra, you know, roughly $400,000 to buy an investment property in Sydney that is positively geared. So there's not many opportunities in Sydney where you can buy a positively geared property worth that much money. So that's kind of how we look at it from a financial point of view. I just think you've created such a beautiful home here. The idea of downsizing, moving into your backyard, saving money on the mortgage and living in a small house with a huge pool is just absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much for sharing your home with me. Thank you, Bryce. Thanks, Bryce. This is a very clever design. Architecturally, it is modern, it's beautiful, it's functional, but what I love most about it is it doesn't forget to be playful. The way that the kids are honored in this space and family life was prioritized is evident all throughout. And ultimately, that is what makes it a home.